Yeah, I'm really, really surprised that uh, so many people joined us today and I hope there will be some more because we have uh, more than 10 people signing up for this free webinar. Yeah. Okay, well, I think I will um, start over here. We still have two minutes and uh, if someone might be very much on time, I think maybe uh, I would just go back some steps. In the beginning, once again, very much welcome here. We are uh, in Hangzhou, China today uh, with not such beautiful weather, but it's still warm over here. And I prepared this course for you talking about the essence of tenuous Chinese medicine study, mainly about my study here, mainly in Hangzhou, which is in the southeast of China. So I prepared a lot of topics which I would like to share with you. And as you already can see, um, Wushan TCM, this is the main website, what I'm organizing to connect Chinese medical students and practitioner. So this is a free topic to start um, various uh, subjects what I would like to introduce in the beginning before also giving further introductions about professional courses about Chinese medicine. Not only hold with me, but also in connection, no, not here, over there, there will be a Chinese teacher sitting and uh, I will invite Chinese professional teachers. They will come to teach and I'm gonna be the translator and the moderator. So the idea is to give you a very authentic lecture coming here from China with good language uh, translation and I hope my English is fine that everybody can understand it. So our topic today um, is talking about the essence about the 10 years I already spent over here. Uh, I'm still in China and I will go on with my studies and um, today I would like to give you different kind of insight of what I did and uh, so I, I think everyone is able to hear me and to see me so I just continuously go on talking. If there are any kind of problems with the internet connection please use the chat. Yeah, Please send me a message and uh, I will take care of this. I'm very much hoping that the internet connection is with us if all of a sudden um, maybe the connection is shutting down, which can happen in China because uh, the broadcast internet connection in China is anything else than very stable, please stay in the online classroom. I will log inside again and we will uh, go on with the course. Well, I'm not hoping that this case is taking place, but just in case that you know, uh, I will be here. <laughs> Okay, so uh, today um, the content you have a little bit in front of you is mainly about what I did here in Hangzhou, China. As so uh, my 10 years of medical, Chinese medical education in a local university, I want to give you as well um, different kind of insight and information about China. Maybe there is uh, the other one or the other who is planning to come to China or maybe some of you already have been to China to give you an overview on what is uh, waiting here on what we can expect and what we should prepare. I give you more insights about Hangzhou. This is the city where I am uh, right now living in in the southeast of China. We are very close to Shanghai which is more on the seaside. Well it's still something like 200 kilometers but it's uh, related with South China. I will also give you uh, some insights about different universities. I went mainly to the Yunnan Chinese Medical University and the Zhejiang Chinese Medical University. These universities uh, have been my education institution, institutions where I have had my whole study beginning with the Chinese language. So this is another topic where I would like to give you some insights on uh, what uh, is necessary to focus on if we really 
have the idea to come here to study. In the beginning, I want to give you a very short overview about myself. My name is Tim Wukan. I'm originally from Germany, from the beautiful Hamburg, from the northern part of Germany. And since 2004, I am living in China, mostly in Hangzhou. Nine years and one year I spent in Kunming, which is in the southwest of China. I started my career with learning martial arts and through uh, extensive training of martial arts, I became more and more interested also into Chinese medicine. And in 2004, I took the decision uh, to quit my job. At that time, I was a kindergarten teacher and I was teaching kids uh, Tai Chi and Qigong. So I took the decision to move to China and to spend um, my, uh, to put my main focus on the Chinese medical education. There is uh, a little bit more of introduction about what I did. Uh, as you already know from the topic, it's about uh, the 10 years in China, which I spent mostly at the Zhejiang Chinese Medical University. We will have later more introduction to this school and what makes it special here in China. And um, of course, in the background, uh, we have um, Wushan TCM, which is my Chinese medical network, which I founded in 2008. And the idea of Wushan TCM is to connect Chinese medical practitioners and students and to bridge the East with the West. At the moment, we are focusing on online courses. Um, that means we will invite Chinese medical teachers who are holding live uh, lectures about various topics from Shang Han Lun, Jing Kui Yao Liu, uh, TCM basics, uh, about diagnostic, gynecology, pediatrics, and other um, fields from Chinese medicine. And I will translate these Chinese lectures into English and later also into German. So at the moment, the main offer from Wushan TCM is for online courses, but in the future, we are also planning to organize small groups of students to offer local courses as well. And at this time, uh, because I want to keep it as an interactive webinar and don't talk all the time because I uh, would like to hear also a little bit from you, I would like to start um, a call and uh, would like um, to ask you about your profession. I will start this right now and you may choose from three answers just to give me an overview. Um, yes, okay, now you should have it in front of you and you can just make a click if you are a Chinese medicine student, a practitioner, or you belong to uh, others. That means you have another profession. I hope everyone can see that right now. Um, just make a click and confirm and um, please uh, confirm it to me. Okay, great. We already have a total votes of seven. Okay, by only having... Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Also in the field of medicine, Maria. Okay, welcome to everyone over here. This is just for me to get some more uh, understanding later also on about how to design these courses. Mainly I'm focusing on uh, persons who have a medical background and this is also very much important for me because uh, you already know Chinese medicine. The deeper we step, the more difficult it will be. I hope everyone can see uh, the results right now that we have, um, we don't have any student with us right now, if I'm correct. Okay, mainly Chinese medicine practitioners. I would be very interested as well also which country you're living right now. If you feel like you would like to share this, just simply type in your country uh, in the chat. That would be very nice for me to see as well where my students actually are coming from. 
So for me, it's also a very personal approach. I would like to uh, keep a very individual based and very personal approach. Uh, I'm finishing this hall right now. Um, and I hope everyone... Um, okay, here are the results again. I'm sorry, at the moment we... Okay, I, I forgot something. So you can see that uh, we have mostly Chinese medicine practitioners with us, but also uh, other participants coming from the field of medicine um, and studying dental medicine. Perfect, great, wow, that's very interesting. Okay, I'm closing these results now and um, go on a little bit to tell you on how I started. I already told you I went through martial arts, uh, quite extensive training, uh, having a Kung Fu teacher in Hamburg and I had very much the luck that he was not only teaching on how to fight but also on how to keep healthy. So my study went through Tai Chi and Qigong and also Wing Chun Kung Fu. Some of you might know this and this was also the first station in China when I arrived here in 2004 simply because I was studying a lot of martial arts in Shaolin, in, uh, in Yangshuo, which is in the south of China. So this was my main interest at that time and it was quite hard because seven hours training in some of these martial arts schools were also too much for me and I was in quite good condition but after some time, I, uh, after some years of practicing, I was more deciding into, uh, to step inside the medicine and at that time I was already looking around in China what city suits to me and I found out that Hangzhou and Kunming were very comfortable, so this is where I started my medical education. First learning one year of Chinese language, and this was already a very uh, big step for me because I didn't have any kind of <clears throat> Chinese medical language with me when I started here. So I was first joining one year of Chinese medical language, and after I had five years of the bachelor degree and another year simply in the hospitals going through different departments plus on top three years of the master degree. So altogether right now I think I have reached the time to, uh, to share my knowledge with you. This is what I'm uh, focusing on right now. Through my practice in local hospitals I met a lot of personal doctors Sorry, I could make a lot of personal contacts to doctors, also in pharmacies, and these doctors I will um, invite here to give very interesting lectures. So, um, if we decide to come to China to become uh, educated over here, um, we have a lot of questions actually in front of us. Do we start with a short-term course or an, an advanced course? or already stepping in, uh, inside a long-term study. This is what I had uh, the same in the beginning and I chose to learn Chinese uh, language before because when I arrived here I was in a hospital and I had two weeks of uh, English study together with the translator but after 10 minutes of a conversation between a doctor and a patient I got something like two sentences so such as um, the patient is not feeling very well and therefore he needs to have a Tuina massage. So this was actually quite frustrating to pay quite a lot of money and not being able to understand teachers and doctors and the patients. So this was my motivation in the beginning to be able to join these conversations, to be able to understand the doctors, also to be able to ask questions. So I started from the very beginning learning Chinese language and then using the Chinese language by uh, completing the bachelor and the master degree. So all of my classes have been held in Chinese with Chinese medical textbooks, teachers. I was in Kunming for one year only with 50 Chinese students. And um, so if we consider um, about uh, moving to China, traveling to China or spending some time over here, First of all, I think uh, we would have to think of where we would like to go, which city to choose. So I had the same 
in uh, in 2004 and for me it was mainly smaller cities i didn't like uh, bigger cities like shanghai beijing like for me personally i needed more a place with more nature around and here you can also see where you can find hangzhou for uh, those if for those who haven't been here we are very close to shanghai shanghai a lot of people will know it it's a huge city with a uh, with a quite uh, rush rhythm over there. It's quite hectic in this place and Hangzhou is uh, also called therefore the Garden of Shanghai. So people are coming here to relax a little bit and to enjoy the mountain areas because the speciality in Hangzhou is that we have a quite big lake and around we can do find a lot of mountains where we also find a lot of local herbs, for example. And this was very important for me to find a suitable place where it's also uh, feeling comfortable for ourselves. So in Hangzhou right now, um, as you can look to the next slide, we have a lot of nature. For example, if you would like to escape after your studies to the T Mountains, uh, it's just a half an hour by bus ride and it's a very beautiful environment over here. The air pollution also is, of course, also a problem in Hangzhou and I think all of you uh, already heard about it, that of course China is having heavy problems with air pollution. Um, we still do have a lot of blue sky over here and a lot of sunshine, so I think it's a little bit better still than other places uh, compared maybe with Beijing, which is, I mean, it might be also attracting to go there to a study and to live, but for me it was important to have a comfortable environment. For the food, um, for Hangzhou-nese and Shanghai-nese, we do not eat a lot of spicy food over here. Sometimes it is quite oily, so we also do have to take care about this if we start to uh, look for our own apartment that we can cook for ourselves, for example. Um, so all of these things are to consider if it's about the life environment, the living environment. Another part are the dialects, which are, uh, if we talk Hangzhou dialect over here, it's also quite hard to understand, but we have other provinces, provinces I'm sorry, uh, where the dialects are even harder to understand. So in Hangzhou, usually the young people, they do speak proper Mandarin and also in the university in the Zhejiang Chinese Medical University, we have like very good Chinese over there. So it's free from dialects, which is different from Yunnan, different from Kunming, for example. If you go to Kunming, which uh, what I did in uh, 2005 to 2006, we had a lot of doctors and they were using Kunming dialect to teach us uh, medical herbs or anatomy or physiology because we also had Western medical classes over there. So this is then, it's quite much challenging if we are still in the very beginning of our Chinese language uh, study, if we also take this in the beginning. So no matter where we go, it's about meeting different cultures. If you are looking forward to meet a lot of minorities, for example, and you are interested also in minority medicine, Kunming is a very good place to go, especially also for herbal medicine. We can see a lot of markets over there uh, where people are selling huge quantities of Chinese medical herbs. And I met also a lot of uh, doctors over there who could bring me to the mountains to see where uh, Chinese uh, plants, herbal plants are grown. So this is very fascinating because the climate over there is very dry and very mild actually. Um, from the sea level, we say it's something like 1,500 meters. So uh, it's actually quite mild climate and it will not be that hot than in Hangzhou. The summertime can be more than 40 degrees. So um, as you already can see, every province in China, if we go to Sichuan, for example, we have to prepare probably a lot of spicy food and not only the food, but the environment is very much important if we decide to come here to study. So I mainly stayed in Hangzhou, which you already saw on the map uh, in the southeast of Hangzhou. 
sorry, southeast of China. And what I also did in the morning is, as you can see, a lot of people are still practicing Tai Chi. I was looking to have, I was looking forward uh, always to find personal contacts to Qigong teachers, to Tai Chi teachers, because I was also, uh, I'm still very much interested in Chinese internal martial arts, because there is also very close connection with Chinese medicine. And here you have the choice to live very close um, in the mountains in the morning to go to the mountains to um, practice Tai Chi or Tai Chi sword and to see a lot of uh, mostly elder people who are practicing over here. And after taking your bike and going to the medical university. So everything is actually quite much um, packed together. Um, even right now, they plan to open a new medical university, a new Chinese medical university from our campus, the Zhejiang Chinese Medical University, which will be very far outside. And um, But I heard that um, mainly only Chinese students will go there. So if you plan to come to Hangzhou to study, of course, you're very welcome um, to contact me as well if you have any kind of questions. The other side of Hangzhou is a very modern site and this is also the place where we do find um, the Chinese medical um, university. And before you make this step to come to China, I was already offering that I'm here uh, to answer your personal questions if you have the plan or if you're just curious like how would it be to study in China, uh, you're very welcome to contact me, but it's also very good uh, maybe to find some uh, other friends, maybe by internet, maybe by Facebook or by other messengers to get a little bit into contact. Because when we start our life over here, we usually have to find uh, a home for us. Building a home, finding a home. This uh, is a picture from my last apartment where I just moved out. It was very nice and as you already can see, you can have very modern apartments over here. Um, something around 80 to 100 square meters in the area what I just showed you, that modern district, will cost you between 4,000 and 6,000 RMB. So also the prices here increased but not like uh, usually as in the city center where you even have to pay more. So it depends on where you are living. If you would like to be close to the university, um, then you have less attracting things. For example, uh, the mountains and the lake in Hangzhou, you have to take a cab or go by bus. Um, in the beginning, we have to find flat agencies. That was actually quite interesting when I began uh, to find uh, flat agencies and uh, how to find an apartment because I often went into a hotel in the inside and I was asking them if they are renting out apartments for a couple of months. So they were actually laughing about me and it seems to be a little bit crazy. So uh, what is hard over here is that we usually have to sign a Chinese contract. So everything is done in Chinese. So if you want to be sure, like bring a person with you who knows the language, who can translate a little bit, that will save you quite much. Finally, we are coming now to the Chinese medicine part. And um, as I already gave you the very short introduction, Coming to China, you have various options of where to study, on how to study, on how long to study. Is it more a short-term course, an advanced course? Are you interested in Chinese language as well? Or do you want to take part in the undergraduate or postgraduate, bachelor, master, or even the PhD? At the moment, we have a lot of foreign schools from the United States and from Germany and from other countries who do already have cooperations with Chinese medical university. That means you can have your main study done in your country and you just come to China uh, once a year, maybe for one month uh, to have your clinical practice over here, which is also uh, not a bad idea to join these programs. So I wanted to be here every day and I chose uh, 
from the very beginning, starting with short-term courses. So I did all of these except the PhD, which is still in front of me. But at the moment, I do not want to go on with the PhD studies because I uh, feel more like I would like to use my knowledge and apply this knowledge. In 2012, I was uh, also trying to become a licensed medical doctor here in China. So if you have any questions toward this, you are also very um, welcome. And um, um, the difficulty here is uh, again that, um, just a second, I just want to check that, uh, is everyone, because I'm talking and talking and talking, just want to check up again. Is everyone able to hear me uh, and to see me? Can you just give me... Okay, perfect, great. Because I'm in talking just into my computer and I'm just imagining you over there. Just want to be sure that everything is fine because I don't want to... Uh, yeah, that things are happening. I'm very clear. Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. Great. Perfect. Um, feel welcome at any time. If you have uh, questions towarding the bachelor study, which is mainly in Hangzhou, 70% of Chinese medicine and 30% of Western medicine. If you have any questions, feel free. You can also type me in, uh, in the chat in the inside. So for me, the bachelor study was, uh, was the best study I could attend here ever because we had a very strong foundation in Chinese medicine basics, diagnostic, we had a lot of classes for herbal medicine, for acupuncture, for toina therapy, and then for gynecology, pediatrics, external medicine, classics, classical medicine, ancient Chinese, even language, uh, Chinese language programs. So this was really good to spend these five years, which was different later in the master degree because it, uh, wherever we uh, apply for, it's not, it's not the same than we study in our countries, no matter where we are from. You apply for a course and you pay for your fee. And usually, of course, we all have the expectations that we also should have a good schedule, uh, doctors where we can go, translators who are waiting for us in the clinic, um, people who will take care of you, uh, where you can go to ask uh, questions if you have problems in uh, adjusting your schedule or there will be a lot of problems, this is for sure. So in the beginning, we have to figure out that uh, everything is depending on us, actually. It's about our attitude, about how to find uh, a suitable doctor as well, because in the beginning, we probably don't know any kind of doctors. Maybe you have already your interest in what kind of major you're working in. Maybe you are an acupuncturist or an herbalist or you are working with Tuina massage or even uh, the children Tuina, the Xiaowa uh, Tuina. Um, so then the next step is actually to find a good doctor. Not only a professional doctor, but as well also um, a doctor who uh, is willing to take time with you. That means for your questions, it also means for your explanations because Chinese medical clinics are packed with a lot of patients. In one morning, usually a good uh, professional doctor will see up to 50 patients. So there is always a time limit. When are we able to ask the, the, the doctors? That's why uh, if you have a translator with you, Simply ask the translator to write down the herbs for you. This is already one advice I would like to give to you because the doctors are usually saying out loud uh, the herbs which are prescribed to the patient, but uh, you won't have time um, to write down all of these herbs plus the diagnosis plus to be able to ask for the pulse and um, the tongue. So there are already a uh, problems starting. So I would like to give you some very basic tools on how to be able to ask for the pulse, on how to ask for the tongue, simply to um, improve your 
time of study once you are in China and to keep your frustration as low as possible because I also have been together with a lot of doctors and um, not all doctors are of course willing to take a lot of time so just sitting next to them and everything is up to you so that means like hanging very close to the computer writing down all the Chinese characters uh, together with a lot of other patients who are actually standing uh, next to you and um, And this is already um, showing you that it's very much important to know some very basic Chinese language. If you would like to ask uh, to be allowed to see the tongue, as what we have, may I see the tongue? We can say in Chinese, 可以看舌头吗? So that's um, like a very basic sentence. We have the same at the bottom for the pulse just to have um, um, a, a certain tool for yourself that you not only depend on the doctor because the doctor is very much busy all the time. Um, so I would like to teach you in this free webinar just a very, very basic, even though you might not have uh, any kind of background in Chinese, which I don't know, but these sentences are very good to have once you're starting your uh, practice here in one of these hospitals in China. I read it out to you again. Means like, can I see the tongue or may I observe the tongue? Can I, can you please show your tongue? As for the pulse, we do say again, like, is the very polite way of asking. Means like taking the pulse. That would be actually a very short form if we would say ba mai. So the question over here is kui ba mai ma is like may I take the pulse. Um, I would like to give you the opportunity to teach you more Chinese medical language and of course this is uh, not possible to have this um, done in these one and a half hours over here. Um, so in this webinar uh, as I said, it's about the essence and I can only scratch a little bit the surface from all of these topics. So uh, once we are arriving in our doctor's clinic, it's usually only Chinese. It's like, and so and so on and so on and so on. So it is a big, a big problem actually. Um, I'm receiving here a question. I recently took the HSK level two. Do you have any idea what level is good enough to study medicine? Well, HSK two is really nice. It's the beginner level. The HSK uh, test changed over the years. I did it in 2000 and Six, I think. So I reached uh, HSK level six, which is the intermediate level, the middle level. And uh, to my knowledge, HSK level two is still the beginner level. But that means like you are able to have basic conversations, you are able to understand questions and also answers who are given to you. And then the main aspect is uh, that you have to start to learn Chinese medical characters because these are very much different to the characters what we usually um, uh, use in, in, in our daily life here in China. And we do find a lot of different kind of books um, in English, in, in any other uh, languages who are preparing our medical Chinese. I was um, using prescriptions of herbs which were uh, usually in Chinese and I was um, uh, asking Chinese students to, to copy and to write down these prescriptions into a software in, in, in the inside. This, uh, the name of the software is Wenlin, W-E-N-L-I-N, Wenlin. And uh, this is a very good tool at that time which I used to be able to read Chinese characters because you simply can copy paste a Chinese text 
in the inside and then you can also read it by going over the word with your cursor. It will show you down uh, the translation. I'm very sure right now we have a lot of other new software which we are able to use. But when I started my first year of the bachelor degree, which was totally taught in Chinese, I think I was at the same level. So level two or level three, it doesn't matter. Um, at least you have a basic of Chinese language. And once you even choose a program where you have everything in Chinese, you will still start with translations. So once you're in your translations, you're improving your Chinese medicine, but on the same way also your Chinese language. So for me, I think uh, a basic in Chinese language um, is necessary and I think your level uh, would be fine, level two and level three. Um, usually Chinese medical universities, I want to add this, um, are asking for level six if you would like to graduate from that school. And then it depends also on the school if they really put the word on it or if it's not that necessary or maybe you can reach HSK level five and it also will be fine. So um, that very much depends on each university on how strict they are for the entrance requirements. I hope I answered your questions. Sure, any questions are welcome. Please use the chat. Please just type inside if you have any kind of questions. If not, I'm just going um, on. Uh, this picture was taken uh, a couple of years ago with a very um, there's a very nice doctor, Dr. Wu Bo Ping, who is not working anymore, which is very sad. But uh, he was um, having a lot of patients. And I did that once uh, because he, um, he's having patients who are sleeping in front of the clinic. So I wanted to experience the way on how Chinese people are actually seeing a doctor. That means like waiting in line and waiting for hours. So I was arriving there at four o'clock in the morning, I think, in this clinic, and that took me six hours of just waiting time. But I wanted to experience what a lot of Chinese uh, patients uh, are willing to do to see professional doctors such as Dr. Wu Bo Ping, who is mainly um, prescribing um, less amount of herbs. And he was also working in many different countries such as the US and in Africa, in Germany, so he, was, uh, he, is a, he is a very professional and very good doctor here in Hangzhou. Um, I would like to introduce more Chinese doctors to you, um, but uh, of course I cannot introduce all of them. I have probably over 30 different kind of doctors who are usually teaching in the university the theory classes and the great thing is you will be able to join these doctors as well in the clinic. So then you are really able to build up some kind of relation and it's a different way of studying, of course. If it's about learning herbs, which I also had in the beginning as my task, I always went to local pharmacies. In Hangzhou, you do find three or to four ancient Chinese medical pharmacies and it's a fascinating place to be there to study. Not only uh, by taking pictures of these herbs or just going through with your own book to have like references. These are the opportunities of course when you are in China um, and you have the opportunity to study directly here in local pharmacies. Me, myself, I'm also offering medical tours here in Hangzhou, locally in a Chinese medical pharmacy, and we also do visit a Chinese medical museum. And these things I would like to extend more and more in the future to bring more foreign students to here because I have very good feedback from my students and not only they enjoy it, but I, I also really enjoy this kind of work because it's, um, it's very nice. In the beginning, very frustrating, of course, if we do not have Chinese language with us and we go into a pharmacy and uh, we just know maybe how to ask, like, what is that? 这个是什么? 这个是什么? means like, what is that? 
and then we hopefully will hear the name of the herb. So this is already a beginning of how we are able to step inside the Chinese culture and the Chinese language is simply about applying the language. Doesn't matter if it's wrong or not wrong. Me, myself, I believe like if we are able to say it in the wrong way, we will also be able to say it in the right way. But first it has to be wrong to realize to go through this learning process. So we have different kind of pharmacies. We have pharmacies in Hangzhou who have affiliated clinics and we do have pharmacies in every big hospital. So um, of course also Western medical uh, pharmacies we have over here. So this is another picture what I took in one of these traditional um, Chinese pharmacies and it's, it's a great place to spend a lot of time over there because a lot of doctors who are working in this affiliated clinic which we do find in a lot of pharmacies are also willing to accept students and this is a different environment if you decide uh, to go to an affiliated clinic of a pharmacy it's a different environment than a hospital usually there are not so many people and uh, that means the doctors have more time for you once again also here um, if you have uh, any questions I'm giving you my uh, email address. Feel free to contact me at any time. <clears throat> okay, we have something like um, we were starting at four. Yeah, we have something like 10 to 15 minutes left with uh, these introductions. And at the end, I would like to give you also the opportunity to simply ask your personal questions. The same for discovering local herbs. You find um, a lot of um, Chinese herbal gardens, for example, in, in nearly uh, every Chinese medical university. I was going around to many different provinces and were checking out universities. So for me, uh, Hangzhou was very nice to be over here and also in Kunming. I met another doctor in Fujian province who is also a martial arts teacher uh, teaching the white crane kung fu and he's um, also a doctor for Chinese medicine and brings his students to the mountains because he's preparing his own herbal patches with herbs um, collected from local mountains. So um, in the future this doctor will also be part in our tour and um, just a second. Yeah. Mm. I would like to have um, one more time and um, asking you about your uh, favorite way of learning in Chinese medicine. I have another poll where I would like to um, to have you um, uh, simply click on what is uh, your way of um, at the same time I'm reaching another question. Uh, a question from Maria. I have a curiosity. Are there remedies with plants for dental problems? I mean, if there can be a study done only uh, in this kind of plants. Well, in Chinese medicine, problems. Um, connection is down. Yes, no worries. This can happen. I'm lucky that it's not happening to me. Take your time. We're going to be here. Um, I hope you can manage, Luis. Um, in Chinese medicine, um, we do have a lot of remedies and herbs, also prescriptions and formulas which we can apply for tooth problems, tooth aching or bleeding. But if you are asking this question um, only for dental problems, um, I think I have to pass because uh, the 
dentists here in China, they are usually, um, as I know, not working that much with Chinese medicine which uh, I give you another case if there is a patient for example and he has toothache and he is going to a Chinese medical clinic simply because of uh, this pain um, they will they will uh, they will um, apply and they will give herbal medicine to this patient according to its differentiation and according to the syndromes what he has um, and he's able to take herbal remedies to um, smooth down to have um, a recover of his toothache. But if you are asking for a major direction only to learn um, uh, for a dentist uh, remedies, herbal remedies here in China, I have to pass. I haven't heard about this. Um, Okay, I'm coming back to my poll, uh, the favorite way in learning Chinese medicine. I'm just very curious um, about what is your way of usually uh, doing education in Chinese medicine. Um, I hope everyone can see this and I'm um, finishing this as well um, and showing you uh, the results. You do enjoy online learning um, and people are reading books by yourself. Yes, yes, actually, actually, uh, this is also, I'm not the person who, who is right now saying like only do online education and come to Wushan TCM. Like this is not what I'm uh, planning to do over here. For me, it's just um, interesting to see if you are interested in doing in participating online courses because um, I'm also planning to have local classes but the problem in Hangzhou is we do not have enough foreigners to participate in local classes so this is the problem for me that's why I put my um, focus um, at this time on online education to connect Chinese medical doctors from China with foreign customers with foreign practitioners and students of Chinese medicine. So this is my essence, which I think it is very much um, working out for a lot of people who have a very busy clinic and cannot simply close down the clinic. On the other way, if you come to China and I gave you a very basic introduction, we do face a lot of problems. Of course, a lot of language barriers, not knowing where to go to study, uh, not knowing doctors, I can help you uh, of what I know and I'm willing to share this kind of knowledge. This is my offer, but uh, this, uh, that's why I'm, that's why I think like uh, the way of online learning can connect more students and I think it's very fascinating what our Chinese teachers can teach over here. I think they have brilliant classes and I would like to translate more and more. As you can see, we do already have some of these classes. Um, online in our shop. Okay, I'm closing now this poll and I thank you for taking part. Um, I, I, I uh, already gave you some introductions about the universities and uh, I went to the Zhejiang Chinese Medical University and the Yunnan Chinese Medical University. So these two universities are in my main focus. And then it's um, the question of what we can expect. As I already uh, told you, if you have a very basic um, foundation of Chinese language and you do go to, for example, a very small um, university um, which has not that big of, uh, uh, not that big campus, not so many foreigners are going there, you might have a problem with uh, using a lot of dialect in that school. Um, another thing is what you can check online is also once you come here and you plan to take part in the master or in the PhD, if it would be recognized in your country. Um, I know it from Germany that a lot of German students are coming 
to hear and uh, we do can carry with us the great knowledge what we have but our diplomas our uh, master and PhD or the bachelor degree will not be recognized which will be different I think in other countries in uh, Canada or in the US I think it's easier to transfer these documents I think also in Australia so this should be also in your consideration on how on which university you choose because there is some kind of ranking also uh, the top 10 uh, of the Chinese medical university or it's maybe not the top 10 it's the top 100 actually so because there are more than 10 universities of course because in China every province has a Chinese medical university mainly in the capital of the province itself so Hangzhou is the um, in the capital, I hope it's the right word, capital of Zhejiang province, I'm not sure if it's the right English word. Um, so, um, as you can see on this picture, um, a doctor, it's about who is willing to take time, once again. Who, uh, if, you, if you choose doctors who already have a lot of Western students, it might be depending of course also uh, on the doctor and with all the respect towards Chinese medical teachers um, some of these doctors are also not really teaching you that means you're just sitting next to the doctor and you are uh, welcome to write down all of what you can understand by yourself or by the translator so then it depends again on the translator on how good the translator is and how much the doctor is willing to talk out loud in that short time what he has given to you because he will be for sure very uh, busy with a lot of patients. Um, I'm going further to uh, the Yunnan University which moved right now outside of the city so they have their campus 30 kilometers I think uh, outside of Kunming which is also a question if uh, I would go there or not because that means like living in the middle of nowhere at uh, the time in 2006 so this is uh, when I left actually that school not because of this reason but because of uh, too many dialects and it was too hard for me to understand so at that time I was joining the bachelor degree and uh, I was facing too many difficulties because uh, Chinese teachers were teaching in Kunming dialect and um, it was too hard to follow. Mm -hmm. Great, you've been, you've been in Kunming as well. It's a very nice university. Oh yes. Oh yeah. I, uh, I hope I wouldn't say anything against it. I just want to say and to point out that it can be very challenging. Uh, I was joining Chinese Chinese classes over there that means like with 50 other students together in the bachelor undergraduate class. Kunming is very well known for its herbal medicine as well which I already mentioned and let me uh, take a look on some notes so I do not repeat things all over again. Yes, then it's also um, depending, for example, if you are joining a bachelor degree over there. Uh, I think it's only uh, possible to do it in Chinese. There are some universities in China who offer a bachelor degree in English, for example, in Tianjin and maybe in Nanjing. I'm not really sure. In Hangzhou, the bachelor, the undergraduate program is only taught in Chinese which is different for the master degree which is only for three years so you're also able to join this um, in uh, by choosing the English language but then the other question is um, sometimes they choose a lot of master degree students and they will teach master students that means they will teach foreigners who are applying for a master degree so sometimes um, 
uh, that's a little bit annoying because we pay a lot of uh, we, we pay even 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 more money uh, for an English program than for the Chinese program. So that's what we expect actually. So we should have great teachers, but sometimes we only do have uh, Chinese um, master degree students who are teaching simply because they are arranged for the English program. And then it's just the opposite way around that you do not get that much of knowledge what you actually uh, might have if you spend some time and you also choose to learn uh, at least some of the Chinese language terminologies. So to be able at least to understand some uh, parts of these classes. Again, over here, um, a very good uh, recommendation is to take simply a Chinese medical book. Um, I think now we also have it in mobiles that we have some kind of software that we are able to use this software to go over Chinese characters and it's showing us the translation. So as you can see, in, in any way, I'm supporting you and uh, recommending in any ways to start with the Chinese language because you will have more, um, you will have more, uh, uh, how to say, yeah, more enjoyable moments because you are not depend on a translator. Sometimes the translators are very good, sometimes they are also not very good, sometimes they are not coming at all. Uh, everything is possible over here, possible over here. Um, okay, so I spent, I spent one year in Kunming and I enjoyed that very much, especially for the education in herbal medicine. The Zhejiang Chinese Medical University is where I spent most of the time and where I can give you most of the uh, help of uh, arranging things and um, answering related questions. They do offer short-term trainings as well, uh, advanced courses, Chinese language classes with a very nice teacher as well. And if you take these Chinese language classes, you will also have a major on Chinese medical characters. Um, I'm a little bit pushed by time right now. So I have to click a little bit uh, quicker because I still want to give you some time uh, to ask your personal question. Well, these four guys <laughs> looking quite funny with our hats. This was our bachelor graduation in the hot summer here in Hangzhou. I was together with four classmates, two classmates coming from Korea, one classmate from Malaysia, and then there was me. So that was actually mainly a private study. And uh, it was much better than my master study because I had a very strong foundation, ex what I already said, on any kind of um, Chinese subject starting, yeah, as I already mentioned, herbal medicine, the whole collection, acupuncture, toina, uh, classical medicine. Uh, this was very good. I'm sorry, but I'm clicking a little bit quicker, just giving you some impressions. I hope you don't mind, because um, I also don't want to talk too much what you might maybe not be interested in. Um, from our master graduation, again, it's taking uh, three years in China. And uh, if we are about to learn the Chinese language, I think um, um, starting with children books, as children are doing it, is a very good start. That means like, um, we do it the way uh, like Chinese do. That means like all over repeating to write the characters. So Chinese language is a language like for me, which has to be repeated all over again, simply because we easily forget and we have different kind of uh, learning types. That means like we do learn in the visual way or the audio way. In China, you have everywhere your Chinese characters around you on the street names in the restaurant. Um, and so it's very good to make like flashcards to keep them with you in the bus, for example, and to go over it while you are spending uh, an hour in the traffic jam, for example. So um, the same as, for example, uh, watching a DVD on a Saturday evening, but then you simply choose Chinese, even though you don't understand. 
But in the beginning, I think it's not important if we do understand or not, it's to gain a feeling for the language, such as children are doing. Children are playing together and then they easily get into this new world of Chinese language and they, um, uh, they first grab a feeling, also a feeling of the different tones, about how to separate these tones. So um, if you have some kind of, maybe you, you, maybe you use a pen and I think I'm gonna looking, I, I, will, I will look a little bit funny because you have to bite on your pen such as this and then you have to practice to say different words. So the pronunciation will be very clear such as kan, kan, ha. Yeah, I don't want to go on because <laughs> I don't want to make a fool out of myself in front of the camera. But it's a very good technique and it is very important to take uh, attention on the pronunciation. If we do it in the beginning, very clear and very good, uh, we will have a very good uh, way of talking Chinese after, simply because of separating all of these tones. One more word uh, about Wushan TCM until uh, we are coming to our question and answering round where you are all welcome to ask me any kind of questions. Um, Wushan TCM, right now uh, we are working through our website where you can find uh, online courses. At the moment uh, I uh, haven't invited Chinese teachers but this will be followed very soon. Um, once you are going to our website, you will have always the opportunity to view a free introduction about the course. And if you like what you are viewing, then of course you are also able to purchase this course. So what you have in front of you are the futures. It's about the authentic learning and I think this already uh, became very clear um, because I would like to invite Chinese medical teachers. So for me, this is a very authentic approach because I'm choosing only from my personal context, doctors who taught me through these years and doctors where I have the feeling uh, that they really have to say uh, something, that they really have to give a lot of great knowledge. That means these classes will be done in Chinese and I will do the translation work simply because I had all my studies in Chinese. So um, there will be live webinars such as what we have right now and we also do offer um, recorded webinars or online courses. That means then you are able to choose the time when you would like to view it, uh, when you would like to review it, uh, in which location. So everything is up to you. So live webinars. Um, uh, at the moment is still uh, a little bit a problem because I would like to reach European students and practitioners but on the other hand as well people from the United States. So to combine these time zones I hope you can understand that sometimes um, webinars are held in the morning, sometimes they will be in the evening. So Chinese medicine from China, this is our topic. Just give you some more um, uh, insights from this study. For example, if you come to Hangzhou, we have a lot of great uh, acupuncturists here working with uh, abdominal acupuncture, the uh, Jin free needle technique. Um, we have also great teachers who are teaching these things for scalp acupuncture, uh, mainly having a lot of stroke patients a lot of lower back pain, a lot of shoulder pain. This is what we mainly see. Also gynecological disease. Um, and of course, internal medicine where we have a huge, uh, various, um, like many, many different kind of doctors who uh, are teaching and also offering to be with them in the clinic. Yeah, I think this is already saying a lot. It's about live webinars that mean in the direct and interactive way. These courses, what I design, come from my own personal studies. That means I do design these uh, lectures on my own. I 
um, modify the content and uh, on top of this um, we do offer these live webinars where there will always be the connection. So if you are a Chinese medicine student or practitioner but also of course as we already have right now other people who come from other medical related professions or also non-medical uh, uh, participants are also of course welcome to join our courses. Okay, I think at this time um, I'm coming to an end. We do have something like 25 minutes left. Um, I think I gave you a very bright overview. I know uh, there might be a lot of requests which is also um, totally okay to certain topics. That's why I want to open this uh, open discussion right now to have the next 20 minutes for your personal questions. Of course in one hour we can only as I already said scratch a little bit the surface if you are looking forward to have more clear medical information about which doctors are good in Hangzhou or where to live or anything feel free to ask. Yeah, and of course you are also welcome to sign up for free for a free account on our website if you feel like um, you simply want to keep in touch with us to be updated with uh, online courses updates here from China or you also would like um, to join these online classes feel very free as I already said in uh, the next weeks I will have uh, the first Chinese teachers. Yesterday I went to a, um, a meeting of uh, Chinese medical teachers talking about Shang Han Lun and Xiao Ji and Zhong Tang which was very interesting and I'm trying to establish another cooperation with these uh, doctors who are also coming from Zhejiang Chinese Medical University that we are able to have them here in the future. I thank you first for your attention and um, now the word is to you, not the word, but the chat. On the right hand side you will have uh, the chat where you are able to type inside any kind of questions. To help you a little bit, um, we do have our last poll for today is that I would like to know from you what kind of field of Chinese medicine you are interested in. And of course, um, please feel free. Um, I hope the chat is working. Yes, it should be fine. Um, if you have any kind of questions. I already have one question over here. In Europe more and more herbs become forbidden. How do you see this development? Yes, I saw uh, quite many articles and I also met people who were talking about this because usually um, for example in Germany uh, we do order our Chinese herbs from uh, herbal pharmacies and these pharmacies are sending these herbs to the patient directly. Um, I think it's always a problem of like really understanding Chinese medicine like um, because herbs who has some toxic substances who are not allowed to use ma huang fu zi or things like this. Um, I think it's always about uh, the understanding of Chinese medicine that there is still a lack for a lot of people to uh, understand that uh, how we are actually able to use herbs with uh, toxic substances but just um, um, having a focus on the combination of the herbs, the pei wu, on the, uh, the compatibility and on the combination on how to combine these herbs. So I think 
this is still uh, often missing in the Western education. And um, uh, I think it's very, yeah, it's very sad that um, many European countries are walking this kind of direction and there must be also, of course, the big pharma industry behind it because Chinese medicine is getting bigger in many different countries and um, a lot of diseases um, often can't be cured by, um, and I want to be very careful, uh, I'm not criticizing um, Western medical doctors, um, but sometimes um, we have to look more uh, holistic to a problem. We have to be more open and to combine um, different kind of layers, different kind of social problems, emotional problems, nutrition, our uh, living environment, and how does Chinese medicine see all of these things uh, in connection with the Dung Fu organs. So I, um, yeah, I think it's a little bit sad what is going on over there, but um, this is the development. So I don't know, how do you think about it? How, uh, Jens, if I can give this question back to you, um, how do you see this development? Or is there any other one who would like to give a comment on this? Okay, another comment is that I learned that substitutes for these herbs might be an option for this forbidden policy. It shouldn't be that non-availability of herbs makes treatment impossible. Exactly. If I do no um, herbs for adrenal glands, um, at the moment I have to pass. I'm not quite sure, but I can write down this question and I will get back to you. Okay, this is just um, to show the uh, results. Um, well, I will get back to your question, Maria. I, I uh, made myself a notice and I will get back to it. Are there any kind of questions? Um, do you still want to use the time for being together, discussing something? I'm waiting a little bit more. Um, thanks for the uh, for taking part in those three polls. What I gave to you uh, to type inside your answer to give also me a feedback, uh, which is really helping me. Um, to see where are the main interests from people of designing new courses, of course. This is my main uh, task, thinking about topics what are interested for Western students. I will keep these, thanks a lot, thank you very much. I thank you for participating. Uh, Genevieve. Genevieve Bangert, thank you very much for joining this. Hope to see you again and I wish you a wonderful day. Okay, there is one more question. Um, can you tell us about the jobs there? Like uh, if you move there, can you easily find work? Um, well, the easiest uh, position what foreigners are actually uh, getting in here is uh, an English teacher. 
So an English teacher, nearly every foreigner can become. If we go to a bigger city such as Shanghai, uh, it might be harder to be enrolled in a university or something if we do not come from an English speaking country. But uh, I'm coming from Germany and my English, well, it's okay, but still has uh, differences to a native English speaker, of course. I was also working as an English teacher, even as a German teacher in some private schools, in kindergartens, in uh, primary schools, so this is very easy. Um, if you are looking forward um, to work in the medical field, it will be a little bit harder. As I already told you, I was trying to get the medical license over here, the Chinese medical license, preparing one and a half years only for this national medical license test, which was completely done in Chinese. And at that time, I was told um, that foreigners are allowed to have a license. At the end, actually, after I finished the test, I had to figure out that it simply was not allowed for foreigners. So um, it's very much also um, a problem of the law. At the moment, it's allowed again. So if you plan to come to China, for example, working in Chinese medicine, I know um, at the moment that uh, American licenses are recognized and you do have the opportunity to receive a temporary license in China, even though that's not that easy, but it's possible. And I met different people from the US before. They were also working here in Shanghai and in Hangzhou. If you have, of course, any other kind of um, profession and you would like to work, I see China as a very open market still and it is quite possible to find different kind of positions in foreign companies and Chinese companies. Um, yeah, I think it's possible. So uh, I was quite frustrated because I couldn't uh, work as a doctor over here. That's why uh, I'm stepping inside uh, the field of education, online education, local courses, medical tours. This is what I'm organizing in Hangzhou. I'm also offering uh, Tai Chi classes and Qigong classes here in Hangzhou. Um, but this, uh, of course, if you have uh, the idea to create something on your own, I think China is a good place to do that. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if I answered your question. If not, then you can just uh, give me a feedback or ask me more detailed if there is something. Yeah, okay. Um, in general, foreigners are welcome in China. Nothing will happen to you. It's a safe place. We have police everywhere actually. First of all, it's a safe place to be and people are welcome. Second, it's it's very much up to you what you make out of your stay over here. It's not a wisdom, it's everywhere the same in the world, but in China, the hardest thing is um, even if you know Chinese language, uh, the Chinese society is a very close society actually. So if you uh, find Chinese friends, that's, that's a must actually, like you have to have uh, Chinese people who are helping you here. Sometimes you feel uh, that you're still not really integrated. And this, of course, also for uh, finding a job, not to talk about medical insurances or other things, which is pretty hard to get. Um, the visa uh, regulations became very much strict to be able to have a working visa in China is not that easy anymore. To extend your visa in China, sometimes also very hard. So also China is um, it's not that easy going anymore in, in any areas what we can imagine. I have a lot of friends here in town, um, usually people who are living here, working in big companies and also people like me who are trying to build up something such as language schools. That's what I mentioned in the beginning. So English teaching is a very common thing over here in kindergartens or in primary schools. 